Hello, my name is Faisal Bakian. I'm the director of surgical coronary vascularization at the Cleveland Clinic. We're going to be commenting today about the findings of the ART study, the arterial revascularization trial that was recently presented at the uh, European Society of Cardiology and the 10-year results were presented. The 10-year results came as a surprise as were the five-year interim results that, was, that were published um, in the New England Journal of Medicine last year, showing no difference in outcomes between um, patients receiving single versus bilateral um, internal thoracic arteries for coronary artery bypass grafting. The use of the internal thoracic artery in cabbage uh, was pioneered at the Cleveland Clinic. Dr. Loop and Associates uh, published a landmark study in 1986 in the New England Journal of Medicine demonstrating the superior outcomes of patients receiving ITA grafts, especially to the left anterior descending artery in terms of patency and also in terms of clinical outcomes. And ever since then, the ITA bypass to the LAD became a gold standard component of cabbage and it's a quality metric that's tracked um, by the STS, the Society of Thoracic Surgeons, and other quality entities. If the use of a single thoracic, internal thoracic artery was of advantage, then intuitively using two internal thoracic arteries might convey additional um, advantage in terms of graft patency and improved clinical outcomes. And in fact, Dr. Lytle and Associates uh, published our findings from a large retrospective study showing just that. The only difference is the advantage of using two internal thoracic arteries kicked in after five years and the uh, survival advantage in terms of the separation of the curves continued with time, meaning that the longer the follow-up, the more impressive or the more significant is the advantage of using the second internal thoracic artery. So we go back to the art trial. Nobody really expected to see a real difference in outcomes at five years because that's too early. When the results of the 10 years uh, of art um, were announced, um, the expectation at the clinic and at other centers that use bilateral inter internal thoracic arteries was that there will be a demonstration of a survival advantage and a clinical advantage in terms of using bilateral internal thoracic arteries compared to a single internal thoracic artery. But in fact, the study results were negative. But before we rush to conclusions and stop using internal thoracic arteries, we have to try and explain why the art study was negative at 10 years. First of all, 36% of the patients in the ART study received a different treatment strategy than simply a single internal thoracic artery versus a double internal thoracic artery. 14% of patients that were supposed to, re to receive bilateral internal thoracic artery bypasses in fact only received one internal thoracic artery bypass. And 22% of patients who received a single internal thoracic artery and therefore were analyzed with the internal thoracic artery group as a single um, uh, arterial conduit, in fact, received another arterial conduit, which is the radial artery. And we know now that the radial artery offers an advantage in terms of patency and clinical outcomes compared to veins. So inclusion of those 22% um, radial artery graft patients with the single internal thoracic artery arm um, narrowed the benefit uh, margin um, of the group receiving the two internal thoracic arteries versus the group receiving a single internal thoracic artery. Another important uh, factor is surgeon experience. Now, one of the reasons why there were crossover 14% um, as we mentioned between the uh, bilateral internal thoracic arm and the single internal thoracic arm is probably related to surgeon inex inexperience. 
And you could tell that by looking at the variation in the crossover between surgeons and centers. The, most, the more experienced surgeons and centers had less crossover. Surgeons that have completed 50 cases um, before the kickoff of the trial, and you look at the outcomes of those surgeons compared to the outcomes of those surgeons who, are, who did less cases and therefore were probably less experienced, you would see that there was a survival advantage for the bilateral internal thoracic arteries in the hands of the more experienced surgeons. Important take home message is this. Take the findings of the ARCH study with a pinch of salt, meaning that the negative findings in the intention to treat analysis does not necessarily negate the advantages that could be conferred by multi arterial grafting for the reasons that I've mentioned before. Using radial artery grafts um, can contribute to improved outcomes and surgeon experience is a very important factor that needs to be inputted into the equation. Therefore, if a patient comes to you, if a patient comes to your office and that patient is in need of coronary artery bypass grafting, I would urge the surgeon to evaluate the patient's physiologic and anatomic risk and make the best possible decision in terms of the revascularization strategy. If that patient is healthy and young, then strongly consider using multi-arterial grafting strategies. If it's an older patient that is extremely high risk, then obviously the priority is the short-term outcomes and getting that patient alive out of the operating room. And those patients in between those two extremes that I mentioned need to be evaluated on a case-by-case -case basis. But I think the default strategy should always be multi-arterial grafting until proven otherwise. Thank you very much.